Hey, what's up, Evil Dead fans? I want to go over some details on making your Ash versus Evil Dead chainsaw. Uh, we're going to talk right now just about the cuff. Now, I was contacted by Rob, who did six chainsaws for the show. And uh, he gave me the link to where to order the actual cuff pieces that he used for the show. Now, in the past, I've made them. Now, with making them, the only difference, the ones that I've made from these is mine are just a, just a wee bit wider, just a wee bit. Because as soon as I got them, I opened up the box. I'm like, let me compare the difference. So my measurements were pretty dang close. Uh, <clears throat> let me give a close-up view here. One thing you're going to notice on this one specifically is the bolt. Now, if you're doing Ash versus Evil Dead, this bolt is incorrect. Let's get a close-up view of that. That is incorrect. Uh, what Rob did for him is he gave him basically six Army of Darkness chainsaws and the production modified them. Uh, so what they did is they did change the bolt and this is a similar bolt, it's a little long. I think this one's about an inch too long, but it's very similar. But if you notice how it's got the smoothness here and it's got the same top and some ridges on the edges. This one's a little bit too long. <clears throat> I just use this for an example, you know, if I need to put something together. Uh, the one you're gonna want is just a smidge shorter than two inches. This one, I think, is like a three. So yeah, if you're doing an Ash vs. Evil Dead, you wanna take this out. You want that gone, and you wanna replace it with one of these other bolts that I just showed you. And it does not have a nut on the bottom because this barrel nut part is threaded, so it'll thread right into it. And I think that, I think it's like six millimeters is what I think it is. It's definitely metric. So uh, the one that I got right now, I order, I did order two. The other one's in paint right now, so I really can't show that. But I got some of this old PVC. I'm gonna give you some examples on where to install this. Now, depending on the size of PVC, if you're inserting, if you're doing the oversize, which you can tell it's been cut off from here. Uh, you want to make sure that this isn't too big. If it's too big, then these two barrels will be way too close. I mean, you, you can get them closer or you can get them further apart. Just make sure it fits right. It depends on however size your PVC is. Now, this is the size that they actually used. Uh, <clears throat> so that tells me that the cuff that they built was pretty big because it was basically basically like this or is actually a little bit just a little bit wider on certain chainsaws so if you're doing it I've seen a bunch of the cuff pieces done differently from the auctions and what they used uh, this one is basically just shy I would say mm, I don't know it's shy of one inch but I've seen them to where like if they're put on there it's the same distance about the same distance from the end here to here to here. So this diameter is the same diameter as that. Now, if you do that, your cuff's gonna be a little short. You're not gonna like it. So I've seen it to where they're a little bit further to where you got one inch behind here. And then I've seen them to where it's just a little bit longer from here to here. And that's the look I'm going for with this one that I'm building for myself. Um, I want more, I like the, <clears throat> excuse me, the more longer cuff, you know, they're at an angle. If they're straight coming out, it's not correct. It's gotta be a, just a slight angle. So, uh, just a little thing for you guys to know. <clears throat> but if, if you want a safe measurement from here to here, one inch is a, just perfect. I mean, that's, that's a safe bet uh, if you're looking for a distance. And remember when you do your attachments across, uh, from your cuff to your body. It does not attach to this. It attaches right to the PVC if you're using PVC. It does not attach to this piece. So if you're buying or if you're building, don't attach it to this. You have to attach it to this if you're doing an Ash for Evil Dead Chainsaw. Uh, another thing about doing the cuff, <clears throat> when you have these installed together and you're doing your paint, you can do a bunch of different methods. You could do it to where it's just black 
or you can do it to where there's some silver showing or doing some silver detail, which I've done in the past. This one I'm gonna be a little bit different. There was one on auction, I think it was the blood one they did, uh, just because I really like it and you really don't see it on the Vivian chainsaw that I'm doing. So I can kind of run wild with that. So the look I'm going with is black uh, with some silver detail, but at the same time, that kind of uh, copperish look painted on here, mixed in with silvers. And I really like that look. It was for the blood, working blood chainsaw that, that they did. So I think that that was uh, season one, episode two, was that chainsaw. I'm pretty damn sure. Uh, when he was cutting off, uh, what's her name's mom hit, mom's head, so. But you really don't see it on the Vivian chainsaw. That scene, uh, when he, uh, season one, episode one, that's the chainsaw I'm building, but at the same time, they actually, I watched that scene so many times, they use like three, like two or three different chainsaws. The one that flies through the air, you know, that's computer, you know, put in by a computer, so it's not accurate. Uh, <clears throat> but I do have a lot more details about it. Oh, and another thing to go over before I end this video is this top attachment. Should it go over the top or under the top? Now, depends on what you want your look, what the look needs to be for your chainsaw. Now, if you're going over the top like this, this is a working chainsaw look like this. This is the look of the working chainsaws that they had. And I really like it. That's why I did it on this one. Now, this is my old personal one. These are handmade. Look at those barrel nut connectors. Perfect. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, but the other ones that Ash wore, like the lightweight one and the non-working ones, this piece actually inserts underneath the top. Now, the ones that Rob sold him for the production was an Army of Darkness style, where this back is open. And it, this piece inserts inside. So for Army of Darkness, that is correct. If it's open in the back and this piece inserts inside. So that just tells me for the lightweight ones, uh, the ones that were not working, they just, production just filled in the back and just left that strap inside. Uh, I did on my new one, my new personal one, which is gonna fit my hand just specifically for me. So I won't get tempted to sell it when somebody offers me money. <laughs> Seriously, I think that, that's why I'm doing it like that. It's very specific for me. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that one is actually going to be inserted inside the top. And it will actually bolt on with these bolts on the inside. And everything's in paint right now. My top's in paint and the cuff's in paint, so I really can't go over that. Uh, because I know some people, they'll leave dog ears on the sides to where the top will bolt here. And the top of bolt here but I don't like that because I like it so if I need to take it off um, like most of the time now I will epoxy the sides to this so if you try to rip it apart it'll break if you buy one from me just because I don't want anybody stealing my top design uh, I've been told to do this so that's what I do now uh, <clears throat> but usually for, for me what I do is the only thing I hold the top on is these two bolts and this bolt here, connected to these two bolts here, either inside or over the top. So if I need to take it apart, I can take this off, take these two off, comes right off. Uh, <clears throat> but that's mostly just preference of how you want to, want to attach your top. Um, really, you can go either route with that. But that's a little secret. And also, guys, I'm telling you, if you're buying a chainsaw or if you're building a chainsaw and you want it screen accurate, I mean, I was contacted by a gentleman today who wanted a chainsaw by February and I am booked up like crazy. So I, I wasn't able to do that for him, but I did send him in a good direction to get what he needs or maybe he's gonna build one, you never know. Um, either way, I hope he gets what he wants or builds what he wants. But screen accuracy, screen accuracy, that's, that's the tough part. Um, seriously, for me, I will pace around my chainsaw for about four hours staring at something. And if it bugs the crap out of me, I'll change it every damn time. So, you know, that you got to have that eye for detail. You, you can't just, if you're going for screen accuracy, you just can't be like, ah, fuck it, I don't care, it don't matter. You know, <clears throat> so remember that, guys. 
<sighs> when you go with screen accuracy. Guys, I'm tired. I've been working my ass off. Trying to get mine done so I can get on another chainsaw. But there's just some little details for the cuff. Uh, once everything's dry, I will make another video on that back attachment piece uh, and go over different types of metal to use. Uh, because if you're going with the back to be strong, to hold the body in, like this metal right here, you do not want to use aluminum. I'll just give you a little sneak peek. So if you use aluminum, right, I'm gonna put some pressure on this. I'm gonna do equal pressure with the piece that I made. Okay, this is aluminum. See how it flexes? And if your chainsaw has weight, it's gonna bend, and your top's gonna to be raising up if you don't epoxy it on the side. Now, I use automotive sheet metal that they use for cars and stuff like that for the, the uh, attachment piece on top for stability. You can see this one's drilled out. It's already been bent where I need it to be. It hasn't been cut down or drilled on this side yet. This is what goes underneath inside of the top. But here's the exact same pressure. It's not flexing. It's way stiffer, more stability. Um, like I said, if your chainsaw has more weight, let's say you have a real chainsaw bar, and also say if you have part of the real motor, you're gonna want something that gives it stability. You don't want it just to flop around. If you go with a lightweight chainsaw, yes, you can go get away with aluminum, or if your top attaches differently from the cuff, um, like, like I said, if, if you go with like the dog ear kind of thing where the top comes under and hooks into here, or even hooks into here. So <clears throat> there's a few different, different methods to use. Uh, remember, this is the cuff. And guys, if you try to buy this in the US, locally, anywhere, you can find barrel nut connectors, but specifically this one, you can't find it. Trust me, I've looked. This is the one that they used for the show. So I'm glad I got two. I'm probably gonna order a butt ton more, so. And guys, always remember, when you're done building, there's always gonna be trolls out there, guys. There's always gonna be people bugging you and uh, putting you down. Like I had a troll, which I've talked about before. <sighs> and when it comes to trolls, just you gotta give them a little something back. So this is my example, to end this video, this is my example of what you do or even say about trolls. So until next time, you guys stay groovy. Mr. Old Guy, you're feeble and gray. <laughs> Mr. Old Guy. Fuck you, old guy. <laughs>